It's time for the Hockey Writers Grind Line. A weekly show covering everything Detroit Red Wings. Brought to you by our own iconic top line of Wings writers. Sit back and enjoy the grind. Welcome to the Hockey Writers Grind Line. I am your host, Patrick Brown. Joining me as always are my line mates, Devin Little and Kyle Knopp. And we are so pleased to have you with us today. Kyle, great to have you back in the lineup. Got you off uh, off the injured list. How are you feeling, buddy? Uh, I feel so much better. Uh, you know, always... Always a shame when I have to miss the show, but, you know, I didn't want to be here hacking up a lung in front of everyone. So glad to have the night off, but so much better to be back. But now that you gave away that you had a little cold, because we just called it an <laughs> upper body injury last week. Um, so that's why you were out, but never the same without you. <laughs> glad to have you back. And uh, what do you guys say? Let's talk some Red Wings hockey. Huh? Let's do it. Um, so we've got quite a bit starting up, guys. The, the season is right around the corner, believe it or not. And we are going to turn our attention to the prospects first and foremost. So um, the first place I want to start is let's talk about our own prospect rankings. Obviously, the Red Wings are pretty darn stacked when mm -hmm. it comes to what they've got in the cupboard and who they have waiting in the literal and proverbial wings to come <laughs> up. Um, so that begs the question, gentlemen, if I asked you to rank your top five prospects right now, who would you put one through five? And I've been flipping coins. I have no idea who to start. So I'm going to close my eyes and point and Devin, <laughs> you, uh, you pulled it first. So <laughs> rank your Red Wings prospects one through five. Uh, I'm opting to uh, kick the ball, actually, instead of receiving. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. defer. He's deferring to the second half, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the football in, season is upon us. Say, yeah, season is, yeah. In the spirit of football season, that is a very appropriate response. And also, we're off the rails and we're like two minutes in. So, fantastic. All right. Uh you know, it's funny you asked me to do to uh, rank the top five, but uh, a couple months or so ago, I, I kind of just did it on my own. I wrote an article ranking uh, the Red Wings top 25 post 2021 drafts. So I'm just going to kind of go off that list. Love it. Uh, number five, I've got the Red Wings goaltender of the future, Sebastian Kosa. At number four, I've got Patrick's favorite prospect, uh, Jonathan Berggren. Uh, at number three, I've got Kyle's favorite prospect, <laughs> or at least his second favorite. I don't know, one of the two, uh, Simon Edvinson. Uh, at number two, it's my favorite, <laughs> Lucas Raymond. And then at number one, it's everybody's favorite, <laughs> Moritz Sider. Um, to elaborate on them just a little bit, um, I think that Kosa, even though I have him at five, I think he has the potential to, to make the most difference out of, um, out of the five here. And that's just by nature of what position he plays. If he becomes the type of goalie that he was drafted to become, that's going to be huge for the Red Wings. And that's beyond what uh, Lucas Raymond can be. That's beyond what Bergeron could be. But as it is right now, um, goalies are kind of hard to predict. I don't feel comfortable saying he's a top mm -hmm. three right now but he has the potential to be arguably the Red Wings most important player in the future. Um, and then the other uh, thing I want to highlight real quick is that um, Edvinson at number three and Sider at number one. Um, I think that both of them, I feel very confident in saying they're both going to be NHL players, obviously mm -hmm. Sider before Edvinson. I think the key <laughs> in determining when the Red Wings are going to be good again is how good they get. Mm -hmm. um, if, mm -hmm. if Cider and Edmondson can be a true top of the line, top pair, the Red Wings are going to be set for a very long time. But like I said, it's just up to them to actually realize that potential. Uh, really good points. Devin, I am curious just to pick your brain for a minute. And if you don't have anybody, totally cool. But anybody on the fringes who maybe you considered popping in, in number five uh, instead of Kosa? Uh, I would say Joe Valeno. I have sure. him ranked six uh, and he's a very close six. Uh, I just think that Costa, like I said, he has that potential to be like a, a, <coughs> a true difference maker. And Absolutely. I don't necessarily feel the same way about Valeno. And that's yeah. not to say that Valeno is a bad prospect, big fan of his game. 
Yep, absolutely. It makes perfect sense. So Kyle, over to you, your thoughts on uh, the Red Wings pipeline and, and prospects one through five. Yeah, actually, I really like the way that Devin presented that going uh, backwards <laughs> five down to one. So I might have to uh, steal something out of his book there. Uh, so with that being said, uh, my number five is actually a pair of new prospects. The two Ooh. prospects that were drafted in the first round of this year, which would be Evanson and Casa. Cosa, Casa, um, Casa, Casa, Casa. <laughs> um, the reason I put <laughs> just that really just happened. Anyway. <laughs> the reason I put them together at number five was a they're both 18. They're both drafted this year and they're both still very young with a lot to prove um, yep. at that professional level, not just at the NHL level. Uh, you know, like Devin said, it takes a little bit longer for goalies to kind of mature into true NHL caliber players. Yeah, of course, you get the Carter Hearts, you get the Jordan Benningtons that come up a little bit younger. Uh, but again, even they are coming up when they're in their 22, 23 year old season. Uh, so we're still, you know, three, four years out from uh, Cosa being a regular. So mm-hmm. that's kind of where I put those, why I put those two at my number five. Um, they're going to be very good players. I'm very excited about them, but they are still uh, the youngest of our top prospects right now. Um, at number four, I have um, uh, Jonathan Bertrand, Bergren, 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 get it right. <laughs> Bergren. That's my uh, boy. That's my boy right. Pat, I, as soon as I started stumbling through that, I looked at you in horror. Oh, like, oh my gosh. Pat is, Pat is going to never invite me back to the show. No, please. Uh, please. Can't mess up his boy's name. Um, but no, I, I think Bergeron's going to be a very, very solid player for us. I think he has that skill set that's going to translate very well at the NHL, and I'm very excited to see what he has coming up. I still think he's a year, two years away from actually cracking the lineup, uh, so that's why I kind of have him at number four right now. Yep. Yep. Um, same with Lucas Raymond at my number three. I really like him. I think he's going to be more of an impact player amongst, uh, these lower prospects, lower, as I say, my three, four, five, if you will. Um, but I think he has a real good shot of cracking that lineup this year and, uh, making an impact as a rookie. Um, and then my number two, I'm going to go a little bit off the rails and say, uh, that Valeno is my number two prospect go. to watch right now. I like and, it. And the reason for that is he reminds me a lot of Anthony Sorelli. And if we can have an Anthony Sorelli type player plugged into the third line and really kind of help build up that bottom six around, I think that's going to be huge for the future moving forward um, of the organization. And then obviously number one is cider. I don't think anyone's going to argue with that. And I think if anyone were else were to be plugged into that, uh, everyone would be arguing with us. So, um, (laughs) you know, I'm super excited for cider. I think he has a legitimate Calder chance this year. Um, But yeah, I'm, I'm excited for all these guys. Yeah, I think I think really good points. You know, it's tough. And I want to remind everybody watching, we're not necessarily talking about the most talent or who's the most Mm -hmm. NHL ready. We're talking about potential. (laughs) We're talking about uh, the best prospects in the system, not necessarily who's the most NHL ready. And I say that because I also put Kosa at number five and It's tough. You both said it, especially with a goalie. It's tough, Mm -hmm. but he's got so much potential. um, And I think he really has the opportunity to to do good things and big things within the organization. Um, So I put Kosa at five. I put Valeno at four. I put Bergen at three. I put Raymond at two. And I mean, of course, I put Seidel, (laughs) right? Johansson at one. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I was maybe um, shy a boom, but you know, that's, that's a really good call. It's a good call. Um, and, you know, we'll talk about this in just a minute, but this is probably the last opportunity we will have yeah. to list cider as a prospect. <laughs> yeah. So uh, more to come on that in just a minute, but just really quick elaborating on my picks a little bit more. Um, I just, I think, especially with Berger and let me take a minute to, to talk about him, my boy, <laughs> um, Johnny B. Um, <laughs> Johnny be good. <laughs> so for those wow. of you who don't know it, <laughs> it's a little inside joke, but Jonathan Bergen was one of the first hockey writers posts. I think it was literally my second one, maybe my third that I did. I wasn't even a full-time writer yet. I was on a, a trial basis, if you will. And, 
Um, I've been following him throughout the last year and, and, you know, he had a rough start to his, his minor league or junior career, if you will, yeah. hard, hard time staying healthy, some tough luck. He showed last year, he got off to a hot start and never really let up. Um, in a really difficult league. And he showed last year if he could stay healthy and he can drive towards the net a little bit more, the types of opportunities that he can create. So um, I'm really excited to see what he can do. I agree, Kyle, a couple of years away probably yet, but um, I think he's going to get a shot at the NHL level. And, and I'm excited to see um, what can happen, unless, of course, he's dealt before then, because you don't <laughs> know, you know, his stock is pretty high. And right. with, with a player like that, and again, Johnny B, no disrespect, but with a player like that who's been inconsistent, sometimes you want to sell high if you have the yeah. option. So anyways, uh, that's that's my take on it. I think everybody, what, what I think is really cool is uh, there are enough good prospects. There's <laughs> enough talent. So we could probably go to 10 if we oh, want to. Yeah, absolutely. Easily, um, yeah. So pretty cool. Uh, we want to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, so give us a comment. Let us know. Let us know if we're completely crazy or if we're right on the money. Um, because we especially if you want to argue that cider is not the number one prospect, I want to hear that. <laughs> Actually, I, I would like to hear some arguments against that. <laughs> I am I am we, ready for that one. We, we might even have to invite that person on just to have them explain, <laughs> explain themselves yourself right now. <laughs> New segment. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So, well, uh, to quote one of our other line mates whom we haven't seen in a while on the show, but Mr. Tony Wolak, <laughs> it is fall, which means it's cider season, <laughs> right? So um, that one was for you, Tony. Um, <laughs> let's talk about Mo for a minute because we're about to get a really good look, but maybe not as soon as any of us had hoped because this week the Red Wings announced he will not be partaking and the prospect tourney coming up. So, um, you know, begs the question, why is he still a prospect or at this point, are we thinking he's, uh, he's just being considered as part of the team. So anything to read into Kyle, I want to start with you this time, anything to read into with cider being noticeably absent from the prospect tourney. No, I don't think there's anything that we as fans need to read into about this other than, uh, ciders being considered a mainstay or a staple of the core group that is coming to the camp. And, um, you know, maybe there's some other, you know, behind the scene things that we're not quite seeing. Maybe there's a delay with his visa. Maybe there's something else that's lending to this, but I think that the Red Wings have done this and calculated this move enough that if it was something along those lines, it was because they were on the fence about bringing him to begin with. And by what I mean by that, by being on the fence to bring him to begin with, is why have him play in this prospect tourney when you already know he's competed against other prospects, he's competed in the AHL, you know the next step for him is NHL game time. Why bring him over early and risk injury on a prospect tournament when you know camp is two weeks away? So I say there's nothing serious here. There's nothing that we should be looking into. Uh, we actually should probably be happy that he was left off this tournament team because it means that they really are uh, envisioning him as a staple of this team, or at least as someone that is going to be on the cusp of making this team right off the bat. Kyle, I feel like you stole my notes. <laughs> so um, well, De <laughs> Devin, uh, your thoughts on cider being absent from the prospect tourney, anything to read into there? I'm going to confirm some of what you just said there, Kyle. Uh, Max Boltman over at The Athletic uh, talked to Sean Horkoff, who is the director of player development for the mm -hmm. Red Wings. And he asked him boy. about this. And yes, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, Horkoff's answer basically boiled down to this. Cider's already played two years of professional <laughs> hockey, uh, AHL and SHL. Uh, the tournament is not a full tournament. The uh, Red Wings are only playing three games. It's, uh, it's more uh, of a showcase than it is a full blown tournament. Um, they want to get a look at other players on the blue line. Yeah. Um, and then also they want to make sure that cider's good and ready to go for trading camp. Um, and I get it because you would definitely not want to see most <laughs> cider go down with an injury in a prospects tournament. That doesn't mean anything. Yep. Um, I think all this says to me is that yes, they are fully expecting cider to, um, at the very least make a good push for the roster, but they're mm -hmm. probably thinking he's going to be on it. 
So yeah. why put him in harm's way in a tournament that, like I said, does not mean much in the grand scheme of things. Now, real quick, I do want to mention that this is interesting because they are taking these precautions with uh, Snyder, but Joe Valeno's playing there. <laughs> Lucas Raymond's playing there. Jonathan Bergren's playing there. Um, and I mean, especially in Valeno's uh, situation, mm-hmm. he's played two pro years of hockey, played his one year in the AHL and he did over in the SHL yeah. just like most Snyder. Yeah. So I think that what that tells me is that Cider definitely has the inside track on a uh, NHL roster spot, but the rest of the kids, maybe not as much. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's funny you bring up Felino too, because I mean, he's played in the NHL. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's, that's an interesting point. And I really appreciate the points you brought from Max's article because um helps explain a lot. And again, I, I fall with you. I really don't think there's a need for him to participate I would be worried about injury more than anything. Yeah. I'm always worried about injury. <laughs> everybody, I'm, I'm about to inadvertently have a hot take, and I don't mean to, but everybody who's excited about athletes going to the NHL players going to the Olympics this yeah. winter, let's talk once your, when your favorite player is injured going for a gold medal. So I got, uh, is, I got issues what? with that. But. Wasn't that Stamkos in 2014 oh, yeah. or whatever? I mean, yeah. Well, he was left off because he was injured before. Because, because he was injured before. Yeah, right. but yeah, yeah. but – Still, there there have been it Olympic injuries. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's it hockey, happens. right? You're yeah. you're playing at a high rate of speed. You know, yep. physical game. It's going to happen. Yes. So, yeah. like I said, well, let's actually. This is a good topic, and we should table this for another <laughs> show um, because I don't I don't mean to get into it. But the point remains. I'm just kind of using that as an, an analogy to hold cider yeah. out of out of prospect camp. Do you really need more at cider in prospect in a prospect tourney? I don't think so. Not at this point. In time. Prospect so. turning? We talking about prospect turning? <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here talking SHL. You say prospect turning? <laughs> I love it. The, the uh, rant that will never let's, die. Let's try and it. hit every single sport on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Two That's good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> All right, um, home run next. <laughs> <laughs> let's hit that out of the park. Um, so let's take a quick timeout yes. or maybe instead of taking a quick timeout, let's do the seventh inning stretch. Hey, Ooh. Thank we did you. it. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> and all the viewers just stopped. Yeah, everybody's gone. Everybody's this is gone. a hockey podcast, um, right? <laughs> Thank you for watching yes. our show. Give us a like, subscribe to the Hockey Writers channel. We have so much good stuff on here. Blackhawks banter, Saber Scoop, Chicks and Sticks, What's Cracking, our newest show, Union Junction. Get all of the news delivered to you every morning from Morning Skate. We're on Spotify. We're on iHeartRadio. Um, look, if you want us to send you a page on your beeper so you can call us back from a payphone and have us deliver you the news that way, we can do that. So just however you want to get your hockey news, let us know. Uh, Thank you. Like, subscribe, comment. We love interacting with you every week. And again, it means a lot to all of us. Thanks for watching our show. You're all right. uh, You're you're playing a dangerous game here, Pat. Somebody actually asked me to send them hieroglyphics last week. (laughs) We did. We did talk. You could have just sent a few emojis because emojis are the modern day hieroglyphics. I mean, that's that's eventually what I did. I just kind of send the hockey stick and uh, and, and a little gold gold mat thing. But yeah. Yeah, I like it. It's perfect. That's, I, I like that that's becoming memorable enough that it's being brought up in the following week. That's, uh, I like that. Check, yeah. Check and check. Love it. Um, all right. Well, our bills are paid. We live to see another week. And by the way, for those of you keeping track at home, this is episode number Zetterberg. So how cool is that? I can't believe something with such humble beginnings that we started before last season even kicked off. Um, has been, you know, just an awesome journey with you guys. So, um, we'd be nothing without our viewers who leave all these comments. So let's jump into another comment corner. Shall we Lord Venom, good friend of the show, (laughs) AKA Rick, um, asked a really good question. You know, we talk about being two way players quite a bit. Mm -hmm. What about those pure natural scorers? Who are the Red Wings going to rely on? That will purely bring that offensive minded. Don't worry about the two way. Just see puck, shoot puck, score. Who are the Red Wings going to have uh, this season that they're going to depend on to be that offensive presence? So, Devin, let's start with uh, your thoughts on that. 
I want to preface this by saying that as long as Jeff Blaschel is the head coach of the Detroit Red Wings, there will not be a player that can <laughs> cannot just be offense because I would say Andreas Athanasiu was pretty much just offense and he sat quite a bit. <laughs> um, now, with that being said, um, I, I remember saying a couple of weeks ago that uh, Jacob Vrana is on this team to score goals. That is, <laughs> that's what he's here for. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, like, I still stand by that. Um, what it's going to take for him to play meaningful minutes and not be in Blashell's doghouse is to not be invisible and uninterested in the mm-hmm. defensive zone. I'm sure he's not expecting him to be a full, full, uh, a purebred two way forward all of a sudden, but he's, it, it's about putting in that effort on in both ends of the ice. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And then the other person I'll throw out, and this is from the, uh, the blue line is uh, Nick Letty. Um, Hmm. and looking at his point totals from this past season, uh, he would have read, he would have led the red wings in scoring. Um, he is a offensive defenseman. He's kind of been that his whole career. Um, his point totals are actually very impressive for a blue liner. Um, the only, uh, the only reason I'll, I'll walk back on it a little bit is because he did just spend the bulk of his, uh, time with uh the new york islanders in the last couple of seasons he was playing with barry trotz yeah (laughs) and you got to play defense to play for that guy (laughs) so while i you know i'm not expecting letty to be 100 offense i am expecting him to be a big boost to the offense from the blue line while awful while also offering um some uh some defensive responsibility that he learned while playing under trotz Yes, but can he score from the opposite <laughs> red line? Is that's question. our buddy Philip. <laughs> no, I know. Because <laughs> that's, that's what the requirement is to, yes. uh, to play defense <laughs> for the Red Wings. Um, actually, Devin, to be completely honest, uh, Letty, your Letty selection caught me a little off guard. I didn't expect to hear him, but um, I think you brought up a part of his game that is so vastly often overlooked, which is his ability to contribute on the offensive side of the zone and what the Red Wings got by Eisenman bringing him in. So I'm so glad you brought him up because I think you brought up some really good points that aren't talked about nearly enough, or at least haven't been this off season. So really good. Um, Kyle, your thoughts, who's going to be the goal scorer? Who you got? Well, if we can replace helm breakaways with Letty breakaways, I think we're going to have a wow. very exciting season. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, sorry. Just that is, listen, that... listening to Devin put, talk about <laughs> Letty. That was the first thing that came to mind. I was like, <laughs> what is going on? Uh, no, honestly, I think the, the, and, and Devin brought up a great point. No one under Jeff Blaschel is going to be offense only. And I mean, we've seen this for the last six seasons, right? Like anyone that came in as an offensive only player was immediately reeled in and asked to play a defensive game. Um, with that said, I agree. I think it's going to be Verana. I think he's the guy that if, there is anyone with the longest leash. It is him in the terms of having that, um, you know, that creativity allotment to go and and do his thing in the offensive zone. Uh, But yeah, Devin makes a great point that if he's the type of player that's not coming back and helping out in our, in their zone, in the defensive zone, uh, then he's, yeah, he's going to see a lot more bench than he would like. Um, But, and you also have to remember Verona played for, Barry Trotz as well with the uh, Washington Capitals and he's been playing with Peter Laviolette last year, who is also a very defensive minded uh, coach. And in between there was Todd Reardon, which is, you know, a coach maybe, Um, (laughs) but not quite as defensive minded. Sorry. No, I didn't mean it like that. Um, But you know, he's not as offensive minded, but, but, they're sorry, defensive minded, but still you have those two coaches that were defense first uh, that Verona did play for. So I think coming over for Blasio is going to make that transition a little bit easier on him. And I also feel like, um, you know, maybe what we saw at the end of last year, hopefully Iserman told Blasio, like, let him have that longer leash so he can have that creativity, that freedom to express himself with the puck. Um, and that will lead to more goals, hopefully. So, uh, you know, Bringing it all back, I think it is Verona that's going to be the person that is seen as our one offensive threat. For what it's worth, I think that's the first time ever Nick Letty has been compared to Darren Helm. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> You're <history>. welcome. <laughs> real, 
<laughs> Real trailblazer there, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Well, however, however I can make my mark on history, I'll take it, man. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, so I actually kind of put my thoughts in the comments when I responded last week, but no, no deviation <laughs> that from. I mean, I think Verona is the obvious choice, and I think that's who it's going to be. He's he's yeah. so smooth. He's got such a wicked shot, mm-hmm. um, and he really put it together during his very brief audition with the Red Wings in eleven games or whatever last. Last year so it's too small of a sampling size to get crazy excited about it but i don't yeah. see if, if you're not picking verona really who like he's he's the guy he's definitely yeah. the guy so well, i'll answer your your theoretical yeah. question there yeah. if, if i'm not picking verona i'm probably leaning towards Suter. Um, I think he's going to kind of be that guy that might be there. And then um, if, if not him, hopefully one of the, you know, maybe it's, it's Virgin Virgin or uh, God, I'm, I can't believe I'm stumbling over his name all day today, or uh, maybe Re- uh, Raymond coming up, you know, one of the there younger you guys you are yep. coming up and, you know, have a, a, a hell of a year, just kind of expressing themselves at the NHL level and really finding their own. Yeah, I, I think Lucas Raymond is a great call out for that. I just wasn't ready to pick him for this, <laughs> to be honest. But well, I, think, I didn't I, at first, but <laughs> I think I think Raymond's a good call out. Devin, yeah. I think you had something to add. I I do want to throw out too because uh, you know as we're talking here, he kind of came to mind. Uh, I I've never really thought of Robbie Fabry as uh, mm, sure. a really sound two way sure. person. I kind of think he's uh, he's more offensive than he is defensive. But that's a good call. It, I, I don't know how you put him in the same category as Ron, but I would yeah. throw him out in this conversation. Yeah, yeah, I I can respect the Fabry pick. I would say um, I was hesitant to pick anybody who was who's been on the team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like I know yes. I know Verona was, but he also scored. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, because I think Fabry's a really good call out, Devin, and, and boy does he ever show flashes. And yeah. he was a yeah. great pickup by Iserman, but. Um, but he's been on the team and he hasn't been designated as the scorer. So yeah. um, that's streaking, my only rebuttal there, streaking. if you will. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. But really good discussion on that. Um, interested to hear what you guys think. Let us hear it in the comments and um, looking forward to hearing it. So, all right. I got to hold myself accountable here, <laughs> fellas. Because... Explain yourself now. <laughs> <laughs> because our good friend Paradox Destroyer rightfully called me out. Because I inadvertently uh, gave a little bit of a hot take last week by <laughs> insinuating it was a done deal, if you will, that Larkin <laughs> would be starting or be playing on the second line. And obviously nothing could be further from the truth. There's, <laughs> there's nothing there that indicates right out of the gate Larkin would not be on the top line. So I, I didn't mean to start anything uh, in my own head as I was going through it. We've had discussions in the past about that. And it seems like Iserman is okay with him being a second line center. If he's going to focus more on his defensive um, prowess as well. So that's my justification and my explain yourself right now. But <laughs> that does bring up a, a, a good question that paradox brings up too. Is Lark in a first line center, whether or not he plays there, if he starts the season there or whatever, is Larkin a first line center? And I think we started with Devin last time. So Kyle, let's start with you on that. I'm actually going to come to your defense, Pat, and say that, um, no, he's not a true first line center, but the Red Wings right now kind of have a one a and one B line. And then, you know, maybe like a three C and four B line. I don't know. Uh, but they have like a one a and one B line. And what I mean by that is you could really switch either of those top two lines as being your number one or number two line. Um, and really you'd get pretty much the same type of output from them. I believe, uh, you know, yes, Larkin plays a second role center type of game more than he plays a first line center type role. Uh, but with the team that we have right now, he has to be a first line center uh, just because we don't have anyone else. Makes sense. Makes sense. Devin over to you, your thoughts on Larkin and is he a first line center? 
seems like there's always a question on our agenda where I look <laughs> at it and I just know I'm going to talk for a while. And, Those uh, are the best kinds of questions, Devin. <laughs> this, this is the one for this week. That, so, that's, that's why I kept mine to 10 seconds or less. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling, Devin. I had a feeling. <laughs> All right. Uh, here is what, here are my thoughts on this topic. Um, one, or I don't even know how to explain this. Uh, I do think Larkin is a first line center and here is why, uh, one, he is right now. Um, I, literally there's, there's, you know, you either are or you're not, um, two, um, we're talking about the red wings potentially making the playoffs or at least scratching at it within the next two or three years. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Unless some miracle happens, I don't know who that top line center is going to be other than Larkin. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe Suter takes a big step forward, but I'm not betting on that. Sure. Maybe the Red Wings uh, are able to draft Shane Wright, but uh, I don't know if you've <laughs> noticed, but Red Wings draft luck is uh, pretty much non-existent. Yeah. Um, the way I look at it, there are three ways to acquire top centers. You either draft them, you either trade for them, or you sign them. Drafting, I just said it. You, you cannot yeah. bank on that. Even if you're the worst team in the league, you yep. can't bank yeah. on that. And they are no longer the worst team in the league. Exactly. And, that, and that's the, and that's the, the, uh, the thing. So here. We're, like we're, they're going to move up. That's the yeah. best joke of the day. Anyway, like, sorry. Doug. Exactly. <laughs> like we're, we're talking about the wings starting to like get good. So like, there's yeah. no way they're going to get that. Now. <laughs> uh, free agency. Um, Top line centers very rarely make uh, mm -hmm. go to the free agent market. I think the last one that you can really point to and say that was a top line center was John Tavares. Um, and he took off and he, and he went home to Toronto <laughs> and placed um, on a fourth line. So even if you do have a top center, that's in the market, a, you can't guarantee he'll sign with you unless you're right. going to grossly overpay him or like he grew up in Detroit. Um, <laughs> And then the other way to do it is trading. Now, this one I think is, is a possibility in the future, but in order to acquire top line centers, you have to give up a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, no one's trading a first line center for a third round pick. <laughs> uh, where the Red Wings stand right now, I don't know that they're in a position where they can just trade away, you know, Simon Edvinson for a first line center. I think you want to hold on to a player like Edvinson before you'd make sure. a move like that. Now, in a few years after they've accumulated more prospects, maybe a couple players have blossomed and really surprised, then you can dip into your prospect pool and your picks because now you're starting to be a good team. And then maybe you can make a move for a top mm -hmm. line center. But even then, we're talking years down the road meanwhile you have larkin um the other part of this uh i'm gonna ask you guys can you guys tell me who the four centers were for the chicago blackhawks when they won the stanley cup in 2010 uh nate could where's nate when you <laughs> uh, well, it was like taves Taves. um oh my gosh Eric Daze. No, I'm kidding. What about what about 2013? What about 2013? I no. <laughs> what about not on the spot like that? <laughs> yeah, you didn't so give us any time to prepare. So we're making a point. We are my making point, a point. Here. My point here is that you've said Taze, and I don't know. You can build a <laughs> dynasty with one good center that everybody knows. And guess who Larkin gets compared to a lot, or at least he got compared to when he was yeah. a prospect. It was Jonathan Taze. Absolutely. Uh, I think I, I wrote an article about this last year, right after the Red Wings uh, drafted Lucas Raymond. And I made the argument that the Red Wings should make a concerted effort to build up on the wings because like the Blackhawks, mm -hmm. they had one really top tier center or, you know, just a good solid two-way center that could do it all. And then they had a ton of talent on the wings and that they had a very solid defensive core. Mm -hmm. The Red Wings are building a very solid defensive core. They've got a goalie of the future, hopefully in the, uh, in the uh, wings, and they've been building up a lot of talent on the wings you'd probably like to see them add a few more but they're on their way there i think as it stands right now you have to plan for larkin being the top center because you can't bank on getting one anywhere else right now so what you do is you build up elsewhere and if luck strikes and you're able to get a top center elsewhere then great you've already done your work elsewhere and that top center comes in and you've got a juggernaut 
But until then, you've got Dylan Larkin and you've got to make the best of it. Yep. What I will say, counterpoint, Devin, is... <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, well, no, nothing. This is... I haven't had time to prepare a proper rebuttal, so it's nothing <laughs> crazy. But, um, but honestly, if you would have asked us in May or June... Yeah. May, May, I guess, or April or whatever. Who's the Red Wings goalie of the future? Yeah. We'd have been like, ah, we got nothing. I Nobody. Uh, who? Yeah. And how quickly things changed in just a series and- of weeks to where, not to say Ned's the answer or Costa's the answer, but all of a sudden that question is yeah. a lot less fuzzy. And yeah. I feel like with Steve Eiser and his GM, the same could be said about a pure top line center. Now, that again, that was just an off the cuff rebuttal yeah. coming from a guy who can't name the <laughs> top four centers from three <laughs> three Stanley Cup championship teams in the last eleven years. So I'm very disgusted with myself right now. Now, uh, I, I but, will say no. no I, I agree with you. It, all it takes is one lucky strike or one yeah. bold move, but you can't you can't bet on it. You know, you know that's, everything that, went downhill when Luke Lindenning left. That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're saying we're going to draft a kid, we're going to well, do whatever you're hoping right. you're not planning and hope is For not sure. a plan. Yeah. Yep. No. Devin, yeah. Go ahead, Kyle. Devin, I have to know who are the top four centers because or not top four, but who are their centers? Cause I keep going back to like Andrew Shaw and, uh, 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 Sharp and all the other guys who were wingers, but I couldn't yeah. think of who their centers were. So 2010, it was Taze, Sharp, uh, John Madden, and I couldn't figure out who the fourth John. one was. <laughs> um, John Madden. I still uh, think of him with the Devils. Anyway. I was just going to say, yeah. It was dev- <laughs> he had a big <laughs> stint with the Devils. 2013 was Taze, Michael Hanzus, Andrew Hanzus. Shaw, and Dave Boland. So I did get two of the four. <laughs> yes. And then I just 20, thought there were wingers. <laughs> 2015 was Taze, uh, Brad Richards. Shout out okay. To yeah. Just got uh, signed. Andrew Shaw wow. and Marcus Kruger. All right. Nice. All right I'm, I'm taking a half, half a star yeah. for that. I'll give we got, we got to make sure though. <laughs> you know what? We need everybody to fact check Devin. Cause he lied to us about That's Cooper true. and Blashell. <laughs> So <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> I held myself accountable. You did, you did, you did, you did. And I'm just giving you a hard time because uh, a tip of the the tip of the cap for holding yourself accountable for that because uh, I never even second guessed it. I I was <laughs> I was watching you guys last Saturday morning and and Devin popped up with that and I was like Man, what a great poll! Like I wouldn't even thought to have like gone brilliant. and looked at that. And I was like, well, I could just make up arbitrary <laughs> things. <laughs> so I mean, come on! I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Devin. Uh, Devin, I actually really, I really appreciate you holding yourself accountable. And we all, we uh, yes. all joking aside, we all hold ourselves uh, on this line, anyways, accountable because we want to bring you the greatest coverage we can. So anyways, we will not lie to you if we know we're lying. Not intentionally. <laughs> anyway, not intentionally. And if we find out we lied, we'll tell you the truth. <laughs> yes. oh. Boy, Devin, Devin Stradamus over here predicting that we were going to take 15 minutes on that one topic. So let's we're going to move it right along because the show is puttering along at a pretty good pace and we just lost it. Um, no, no, no. And really good points. And honestly, given the amount of comments that it generated as well a very mm-hmm. uh, a passionate subject amongst yeah. the fan base as well so um, all really good points and appreciate the perspectives for sure um all right we've got hell 9001 bringing up um theodore niederbach great name we haven't talked a whole lot about him um hell's wondering will he turn into an nhl player some super quick statistics niederbach came out of the gate uh in uh, for Lunda juniors u20 crazy uh what 55 35 points in 19 games something like that Mm -hmm. um his stint in the shl with the big boys was a little bit slow i think two goals he had or something like that but he's just getting getting in those big leagues and things so the question is theodore niederbach your thoughts on him will he become an nhl player will we see him with the red wings um devin let's start with you i'll keep this one quick i promise <laughs> uh i really like uh what theodore nearback has uh i like him as a prospect um i think we're still two maybe three years out from him making a real honest push for the uh the red wings and even then two is being pretty optimistic um 
am I willing to bet the house on him being an NHL player? No, but I do think he certainly has that upside. I think he has middle six winger written all over him. It's going to be on, uh, it's going to be up to him and how he performs over in Sweden. And mm-hmm. then when they inev- uh, inevitably bring him over to the AHL, how he does over there. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, don't bet the house on it, but definitely keep an eye on him. I think of, I can't help but think of our old friend, Peter. Yes. Yes. Um, when we, <laughs> you were right on yes. that too, Devin. So yeah, Peter, Peter liked uh, the Niederbach. He was on the Niederbach train for sure. Yeah. So <laughs> um, Peter, if you're watching, let's hear you in the comments. It'd be great to hear from you. <laughs> Kyle, your thoughts on Niederbach. Is he an NHL caliber player at some point? I think the potential is there. And just like Devin said, it really is going to come down to the next two to three years of his development. He needs to have a really good year in the SHL this year in order to solidify his place with the Griffins next year. And then he's going to be a one to two year guy at the very least in the AHL. Um, And then it will determine how his development is coming from there. And also, is he going to fill into his size? You know, he's still kind of on the smaller size. Uh, He's still young. So if he can kind of put on some height Mm -hmm. and put on some pounds and muscle, you know, and really fill into that kind of role that we're expecting him to play on the wing there. um, I think in probably three or four years, we could see him in the middle six role. Yeah. Um, Go ahead, Devin. I also want to throw out there that I think he's a player that really needs to find his niche. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. I think as it is right now, he kind of just does a lot of things. good. <laughs> um, but in order for him to really yeah. make the league, I think he needs to either become a guy that is going to be a power play guy or a penalty kill guy. I think you're right. I think he's still searching for that role that he fits into perfectly because he kind of has those tools to be a little bit of a jack of all trades but he really needs to you know focus and hone in on that one aspect of his game yeah there are aspects of his game to your point that he excelled and he did really well on the u20 team and and i think the the skill set is there but the question Mm -hmm. is kyle i i love the call out about basically him growing into his big boy frame, right? He's, <laughs> he's got to be, he's got to grow. Yeah. Um, he's got to, and, and the SHL is going to help him do that. Yep. Um, you know, playing with men is always helps you do that. It understand, helps you understand what you're up against. And I absolutely think we'll see Niederbach in the NHL at some point. I think he's a role player. Um, but I absolutely think we'll see him in the NHL at some point, whether it's with the Red Wings or if he's dealt at some point or whatever remains to be seen, but he has the talent. Um, he's shown the ability and he has, we don't have a big enough skill set at the top echelon of levels yet to really make a, a final call, but somebody to keep your eye on and, and Hal, uh, really good question, Kyle. Yeah, actually, uh, you brought up a great point and something that I was going to touch on, but didn't. Uh, we did ask or what we're asked, will he turn into an NHL player? So I want to ask the question, will he be an NHL player with the wings or will he be traded as an asset before he gets there? Because I think you're right. I think he could turn into a, a good NHL player, uh, like a decent middle six, someone that's in the lineup every day, but you know, unless he does find that role, it might not be with the wings. They just might not have that space for him. I think that's a really good question, and I'll actually take a stab at it first. Um, If you ask me right now, I don't think you'll see him with the Red Wings. Mm -hmm. I think he's far enough out, and this is, again, off the cuff, and we all know I I lament my own GM skills, right? But uh, I feel like he's far enough out from making the team and too much of a fringe player at that to not be included in some sort of deal. Yeah. In the future where you are establishing your roster. And it's not fair to say three years out is too far because we're talking about Kosa and he could be three to four years out. Yeah. But yeah, I just I don't think I don't think Niederbach is a top line guy. I don't necessarily even think he's a second line guy. And you don't wait. You don't necessarily have to be patient with that because they're a good enough prospect to potentially be able to trade when you're ready to make that move and bring in your top line center. But anyways, <laughs> um, Devin, Devin, your, your thoughts on, uh, uh, on Kyle's question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, folks, you heard it here first, Mr. Uh, Mr. 4.4 million just told you he's going to be <laughs> traded. So you know, it's going to happen. Um, no, I, I completely agree. I honestly think he could be that, uh, that prospect that you can feel comfortable throwing into mm-hmm. a deal to acquire a needed piece. So I'll agree. I think that, uh, he'll play NHL games, probably not for Detroit. 
Well, I, yeah. we'll see. Teddy Niederbach, we're going to call him now. Teddy Niederbach. I, I like Teddy it. Niederbach. I like it. <laughs> so we'll see. And hell 9001, we're not done with you yet. Because, <laughs> uh, you you popped another question in there. So Bonus. You Bonus. A, yeah, buy one the BOGO of questions here. <laughs> <laughs> so, All about good deals here. <laughs> <laughs> but it really does segue in. And this is the last question of the show, guys. So um <laughs> Thinking about some of those players who aren't going to be at uh, at training camp or the, the prospect tourney, if you will, or anything like that. Um, Edvinson, Soderblom, Vero, uh, Niederbach, um, individuals like that. Which of those types of players, this is a tough question, do mm-hmm. you see as being the most NHL ready? Who do you think we're going to see in the NHL first out of any of the players we're not going to see at camp? Um, Devin, you get the first word here. I'm going a little, uh, off the, uh, Ooh, off like the board it. here because I like it. I'm surprised the person wasn't uh, listed, but Albert Johansson is who I uh, picked. That, and that's on me. That's on me for just not putting him. <laughs> the, host, the, host, the host is failing. He can't roll off a Blackhawks championship. <laughs> so anyway, that's go. on me. Apologies. Devin. Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, I think. I wouldn't be surprised if Johansson got some games at the end of this season, if I'm being quite honest. Okay. Uh, uh, again, I'm not, you know, I, I can't see the future, but I just wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if he gets that, that five game look at the end of the season when at the SHL season's over. Mm-hmm. Um, I we'll think call, we'll he, call that the Valeno. Yes. No, that's <laughs> that is hundred percent what I'm thinking of. Um, and even then, like he might go to Detroit, for you know five games just to see where he's at because the next season he's going to spend in Grand Rapids to really uh you know fine-tune his game yep. um but you know the question is who we're, who we're going to see first and I think it's Johansson I think he's actually a lot closer than some people think I think that's a solid answer Kyle your thoughts that I'm that is a great answer and uh and I think you're right in terms of we will see him first just because he will likely see some game action this year, um, you know, unless, you know, all, you know, hopeful hopefulness aside, he doesn't get injured or anything this season yeah. in the SHL or, you know, whatever. But I think you're right. I think he is going to have a Valeno type end of the season where he comes over and, and gets to kind of showcase what he can do um, out of the other prospects that we talked about you know, I'm going to kind of throw it between Edvinson and Solderbloom, um, mostly because, I mean, Solderbloom's just a huge, huge, huge left wing. And I mean, his net foot, net front presence yep. is something that we have not had yes. in a yeah. very long yeah. time. I'm talking Holmstrom. Yes. Franzen. Like we have not had a Swedish mule yeah, in front of the net <laughs> in a very long time. And, and so I think Soder Bloom's going to be that guy that really gets that extra look, especially at the end of this year. Um, and then I think Edvinson is very slightly behind him in terms of he is only 18. He's still young. He has a lot of development to go. Um, so that kind of pushes him back or gives him a disadvantage to begin with. But if you look at our left-handed defensemen, um, you know, that are, across the roster they're kind of getting up there in age you know stalls up there in age letty's getting up there in age and then our guys below that are kind of falling off you don't see anyone that has that you know number one d pairing tag coming up through the ranks and i think that as long as edvinson turns out to be the type of player that all the scouts think he is he's going to be that number one pair tag that you can um, slot in a lot sooner than you might think Pretty funny because I had joked about Johansson earlier in <laughs> uh, in the show and completely omitted him. And Devin, I couldn't agree more. I think you are 110% right. And I, I am changing my vote mid-show because <laughs> I didn't even think about him. And you are 110% right. And he had a great season. Yeah. He was fun to follow. Yeah. I just kept seeing his name pop up and was always kind of checking, you know, the SHL score sheet and see where, where players lined up. And he just, he had a great season. He is certainly, um, certainly talented, certainly has the pedigree to be able to make it to the NHL. And I can't think of anybody in front of him in line. Yeah. I agree. That. So um, I think, Devin, I think you won this round, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I also think I just a, just a everybody gets one. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Spider, is that a Family Guy reference? Yes, yes, yes it is. Yes, yes. It is. I, I almost jumped in there too. Tell him, Spidey. Oh, everybody gets fantastic. One. <laughs> I guess everybody gets one. <laughs> I mean, I what a perfect way to wrap up the show. Let me tell you, um, guys, this was especially fun. Had a great time tonight. Always. Thank always you is. as always. Thank you for watching. We want to thank you for checking out our humble little show. Give us a like, subscribe, comment, tweet to us at THW Grindline. We will answer your comment on air. Just ask any of the people who we talk to throughout the week. So <laughs> thanks for checking us out. Don't forget, go Cyclones. And we will see you next time. <laughs>